So a lot going on today in the markets and in particular in the treasury market. That, that's the talk anyway. That's where all the headlines are today about the inverted yield curve. And I'm going to talk about that because um, there's panic in the air. You see the stock market down 400 points. Panic in the air, folks. Not me. I am not panicking. Um, but here's what I think is going on. I think it is technical. And by technical, I don't mean charts. I, I, I believe there are some issues here that are fairly unique in the situation, in the picture, and that is what is causing the inversion. As you should know, we are operating under the debt ceiling, and under the debt ceiling constraint, the Treasury cannot sell new bonds. All right, it is at the ceiling. At the same time, <clears throat> the banks, in order to comply with uh, the regulatory capital that they need, and don't forget, the Fed has been guiding reserve balances now down now for over a year, basically. Uh, that's been going on since, what, October 2017. So um, what is that, uh, 17 months? 17 months? Reserve balances are down over $500 billion since the beginning. They're still high. I mean, there's still one point, uh, what is it, $1.6 trillion, $1.62 trillion, but they're down from well, over um, $2 trillion. 2.2 trillion. Now, reserves are bank assets. So when and they are tier one assets, meaning they are non-risk assets. They are the highest quality assets that exist for the banks. And banks are required to hold certain assets. Tier one being the most important that they can own and hold. So as the Fed has been guiding down these reserve balances over the past, what did I say, 17 months, the banks have had to replace those assets because reserve balances are assets of the banks. They've had to replace them with treasuries, and that's all been well and good. And it's kept the yield curve kind of flat because they've been net buyers of treasuries uh, because they've had to replace the loss of those reserves. Okay, you follow me so far? Now, what happened in, uh, I guess it was what, March or February? It was March. We hit the debt ceiling. And now all of a sudden, there's no new bonds. The only bonds out there are the existing supply of bonds. And that does not eliminate or even reduce the need of the banks to own tier one assets. Because in the meantime... The Fed has still been bringing reserves down by $50 billion a month. That's been the roll-off from its balance sheet. So, you see what's going on here. There's a squeeze going on. The Fed's bringing reserves down. There's no new bonds to supply, to, you know, provide the needed supply for the banks who have to own those assets and you're getting a squeeze. So it's literally being engineered by A, the Fed, who seems to be clueless because now Powell is talking about ending balance sheet reduction, whereas right now, in order to alleviate this situation, if he had any brains, if Powell had any brains to alleviate this situation right now, he would not only accelerate balance sheet roll-off, but he was expanded to $100 billion a month. The guy's a fool. He's an idiot. And Congress really has to raise the debt ceiling, but uh, they're not going to do that till October. Chuck Grassley, who's the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, said, ah, we don't have to do that till October. Meanwhile, Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin, is not making uh, payments into a number of government retirement accounts, the so-called, you know, extraordinary measures that he's using to make payments. So he's not paying some people. Actually, think about it, folks. That is technically a default. Why is nobody screaming about that? So that's what's going on. It is not an indication or it's not going to be a trigger for a, a recession. Everybody's crying recession and, and scared. 
And I'm, I'm telling you right now, I really don't think there's going to be a recession. I would find it very, very um, extraordinary. I would find it very, very uh, odd with this level of spending approaching $5 trillion, It's going to be a new record. <clears throat> and with the bank credit expansion that we have seen, and remember, it takes credit demand for the banks to create credit. They have to have people who want to you know, access credit. So I just don't think there's going to be a recession. I mean, you might, you know, I might be wrong in the end of the day, but I just don't think there's going to be a recession. Anyway, I'm going to finish off this video by saying the policies of the central banks now, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, they're all going full Japan. They're going back to stopping the rate hikes. They're going back to ending balance sheet reduction like the Fed. All the central banks, the, 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 Fed, the, the ECB is doing another round of TLTRO in September. The Fed's ending balance sheet roll-off in September. They're not raising rates anymore. Same thing with Bank of England, Bank of Canada, uh, the uh, RBA in Australia, the uh, New Zealand National, all of them. Same thing. And Japan sitting there for 20 years doing that and wondering why they can't get inflation above 1% because you got negative interest rates. How's that going to happen? All right, folks, I sold my gold today, made a small profit. Uh, if it comes down, I'll buy it again, depending on what these uh, fools are doing. But I think the situation's probably more neutral than negative, at least in terms of the inflation situation, because you still have oil going up. You still have high fiscal from the U.S. anyway. So we'll see what happens. All right, have a nice weekend. Bye.